I'm David Marcus, senior writer at The Deal, here with Paul Mahoney, the dean at the University of Virginia School of Law and author of a recent book on securities regulation, Wasting a Crisis. Paul, thanks for joining us. Delighted to be here. So there's a, a standard narrative about the securities regulation that emerged from the Depression. Tell us that standard narrative and how your work challenges that story. The standard story is that the equity markets of the 1920s were rife with fraud and manipulation, and then the New Deal stepped in and saved capitalism from itself. Now that was politically a valuable story for the Roosevelt administration, but the factual basis is pretty thin. I'll give an example. Why did Congress believe that manipulation was rampant on the New York Stock Exchange? Because of the existence of something called stock pools, which were syndicates that traded in a particular stock. Congress investigated them at considerable length and concluded that they were pump and dump schemes, that they bought rapidly to attract unsophisticated investors with price momentum and then sold out and then the price collapsed. I looked at the records of the investigation to see when these pools were trading, what the stocks were, and what the price behavior was. And there's no pump and dump cycle. Uh, the price does go up, but it doesn't come back down. And interestingly, the traders testified that we're just trying to find undervalued stocks and buy them. And the facts turn out to be more consistent with their story than with Congress's conclusion. So how does, does your story then work in the era of Sarbanes-Oxley and Dodd-Frank? So the mechanism is the same. After a financial crisis, the primary goal of politicians and regulators is to avoid being blamed. And the best way to do that is to say, the problem arose somewhere where my writ does not run. So after the subprime uh, crisis, the idea is this all uh, originated in the over-the-counter derivatives market and the shadow banking system, which are relatively lightly regulated parts of the financial sector. In the dot-com crisis, the idea is the problems all arose in auditing, which was largely self-regulated, and in corporate governance, which was primarily the province of state law. And this is why the aftermath of a crisis is the worst possible time to overhaul financial regulation. Uh, this uh, tendency to avoid blame guarantees that you're going to get the wrong solutions to the wrong problems. As dean of a law school, you, you obviously oversee an institution that's educating lawyers and you interact with a lot of practicing lawyers. What do you think the, the long-term effects of Dodd-Frank will be on the legal profession? Well, the securities reforms of the 1930s were wonderful for Wall Street lawyers. They created a detailed rule book, and in order to engage in securities uh, transactions, you had to follow all the rules, and lawyers were extremely helpful in that. But Dodd-Frank is really not about rules. It's about administrative discretion. And my suspicion is that over time, the, the center of gravity of the securities practice is going to move from New York to Washington because the, the, the real goal is not going to be to follow the rules but to maintain good relationships with the Fed, the Treasury, the FDIC, the SEC, the CFTC, et cetera. And that's really a very different kind of practice than what Wall Street lawyers traditionally did. Paul, thanks for joining us. I enjoyed it, thanks. For The Deal, I'm David Marcus.